Hello everyone, um, my name is Jem Rusija Balkan. I'm the Communications Manager in the European IP Help Desk and I'm here with my colleague Giovanna Girardi. Uh, she works as an IP expert in the Latin America IP Help Desk. And um, today we are here to introduce you and provide some insights into the fact sheet that we created in collaboration as we two, as two IP help us, we work very closely together and we created and published a fact sheet focusing on uh, the similarities and the differences in the two IP system in two different regions, uh, EU versus uh, Brazil. Um, and yeah, we would like to highlight those aspects today in this video. But first, um, we briefly introduce both IP help desks and what we do. So those IP help desks are the service, service initiative of the European Commission in order to raise awareness of intellectual property. Um, we have slightly different target groups. We both are supporting European small and medium enterprises, startups, uh, but uh, in the European IP Help Desk, we are also addressing the um, IP issues of the, the current or potential beneficiaries of EU funded projects. Whereas the international IP Help Desk are mostly targeting the European SMEs who would like to go beyond Europe and expand their businesses there. Um, of course, we are not only two of us, um, we are all around the world. Um, just to help you manage your IP. Uh, we are in Africa, India, uh, Southeast Asia and China as well. Um, and there uh, we would like, we provide our resources and advices there too. So what is our philosophy? So um, we provide a free of charge, first line, uh, practical IP support. And of course, there's solution oriented, hands-on um, IP innovation management support as well. We have a very large pool of international IP experts coming from the different uh, thematic fields. Uh, of course, those uh, thematic fields vary in all the IP hubs since we are targeting the different uh, audiences and uh, we provide those uh, variety of specific services. So what do we do? How do we support uh, the SMEs? Uh, we have a helpline service where you can submit your questions and get a personalized confidential reply in maximum three business days. Um, those are easy, uh, jargon-free, uh, easy to understand replies. And um, usually, as I said, like, it's, it's completely free of charge and it's first line. So what we don't do is we don't do what lawyers do. So we do not provide legal opinions or legally binding advice. And we also have a training scheme in different topics. Again, it varies uh, depending on the target audiences. For example, in the European IP Help Desk, we have uh, open innovation, open science, uh, the uh, Horizon programs such as um, Horizon Europe, Horizon 2020, and those uh, IP related as aspects. Whereas when we come to Latin America, IP help us be mostly focusing on the specific countries and basic IP issues, infringement, enforcement, and so on. Uh, and also, of course, we provide those trainings as online or on site. And we have a huge uh, IP library available on our website. We um, regularly publish new guides, uh, sector, sector specific fact sheets, infographics, many case studies, bulletins. Uh, also, our e learning platform is available on our website. So, if you uh, miss any kind of webinar or training, you can also go there and find the recordings. Um, on that specific topic too. Um, 
then uh, yeah this is where you can find us if you have any further questions uh, you can contact our helpline uh, you can send an email or just give us a call as well this is where the, you, you see the link this is where you can easily um, find find us if you have any further questions you can also follow us on the social media on linkedin and twitter now we call it x as well you can also subscribe our newsletters too um these are also sent out like very regularly and uh yeah these are basic uh differences of two those two regions um so as a territory, you see that uh, the population wise and, and um, uh, economical wise, like we in the European Union, there are 24 different languages, whereas in Brazil, there is uh, only Portuguese, the, the main language. Uh, next slide. And yeah, those two regions are the members of uh, different international treaties relevant to intellectual property rights. For example, uh, the um, the most major one is the Patent Cooperation Treaty (PCT), as it, it's called. So um, all the European Union member states are the the contracting party of this treaty. Whereas when we come to Madrid system, uh, which is uh related to the uh, international trademarks only the european union uh european union member states except one country which is malta and uh the hague system which is related to the design registration international design registration uh the european union itself uh is the contracting party and as uh individual countries um you can see on the screen those countries are the contracting parties whereas the other countries are not um the members of this treaty however since they uh, the all the eu member states are uh, included in the european union uh, they can also um, benefit from the system as well and saying that uh, brazil is the member of all of the international treaties. And with that, I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Joanna, and um, she's gonna provide further uh, insights into the actual, actual uh, the IP system differences. Thank you, Jerry. Um, so yes, um, it's good to see that we have a good level of um, international understanding of the importance of intellectual property rights. Um, and it's good that we are um, relatively in the same page with uh, the treaties. Now, I think it's really important for us to understand three main aspects, relevant aspects of intellectual property rights and the main aspect, the main relevant aspect being registration of those rights, registration of your trademark, which will be your brand identity elements, the name, the logo, the colors you use, um, everything that identify your offering to the consumer. Uh, your innovations as technical solutions, your, your um, uh, coming up with as in your patents and your uh, aesthetic, um, the aesthetic um, appearance of your products. Um, we need to understand, first of all, how to uh, how to obtain registration, because registration is what we will enable you to use as a business tool and what we will enable you to defend your business interests in the future in case there is an infringement or counterfeit. So now uh, we're going to start with trademarks, requirements, and how to maintain them. Trademarks' main, um, main requirements in Brazil will be availability. So uh, no one uh, would have tried to uh, apply for the trademark you want to register. It has to be non-descriptive and it has to be distinctive. That is uh, distinctive is the very opposite of descriptiveness, which is 
um, descriptiveness will describe what you're trading, what you're offering, and distinctiveness is uh, when the name, the brand element you want to use, distance itself from describing the product. Now, this is what you and Brazil have in common. What Brazil and EU do not have in common is this fourth requirement, which is visual perceptive perceptiveness. Uh, in the EU, we have, um, in the last reform, we have um, deleted this requirement so we could register sound marks and scent marks and non-traditional marks. So it, there is no need for a graphical representation in the EU. However, this is still a requirement for registration in Brazil. Another very different um, aspect of trademark system in Brazil is uh, the recognition of highly renowned and well-known trademarks. There is a spe special procedure for that. You need to be recognized by uh the courts and by the um, uh the public you need to go to register your renowned or well-known trademark through this process um which is something we don't have in the eu in terms of of maintenance there is two main requirements here which are the obligation of use which is similar to uh, what we have in the EU, uh, we, after five years from registration, the trademark has to be used not to be susceptible for cancellation. And uh, trademarks need to be renewed. The, there is a renewal fee every 10 years. So that's where we are in the same page there. The trademark registration process is similar. Uh, we recommend always to have a preliminary search to see if there is availability because that's an important step and requirement for, for registration. The second step is file formally filing an application. After you file your application, you have a formal examination, which in the case of you only, only um, analyzes um, legal requirement and uh, absolute, gr absolute grounds for refusal. In Brazil, we also analyze the relative grounds of refusal. That is to say, if there is anything similar to the trademark we want to register in the um, database. If the examiner finds there is something similar, he will raise an, is an issue, an office action, and you have to go through that. Um, then after the formal examination, a uh, trademark is published and uh, in the case of Brazil, opposition period is after publication. In the case of EU, opposition uh, is also after publication. And then you have your registration uh, granting uh, stage. So that is the process. The main difference here is uh, the formal examination, the content of the formal examination. And that means uh, basically because it includes an additional um, examination, an additional analysis, that means the process will be slightly longer than what we are used to in the European Union. Now, there's two ways to request your uh, trademark registration, both in Brazil and the EU. One is go directly to the uh, relevant intellectual property office. That is, that will be the national offices or the European Union office and uh, the national office in Brazil or um, use the Madrid system. In, in both cases, it's possible to do that the applicant to use the Madrid system, to use the international system to register your trademarks, you're going to have to, you need to have a base mark. There is a, a trademark applied, at least applied for, in your home country or in the EU, if that was the case. The office of origin of that uh, trademark application will forward your request to the 
a World Intellectual Property Organization. That's called the International Phase. And the World Intellectual Property Organization will then distribute your, your request to the countries you have chose. Uh, in this, the case of relevance today, Brazil. Uh, and that's when you enter the national phase. The national phase means that the national office you have chose will then analyze the requirements if the trademark requirements are fulfilled and then again publish the trademark and uh, have your your s s your um, your process as the normal process that exists in uh, the national office. It takes slightly longer than if you um, if you'd apply directly to the national office because um, you have different phases, an additional international phase. No. Now changing the subject uh, from uh, trademarks to designs, which is the aesthetic feature of your offering, the packaging or the appearance of your product. Um, here we will find um, perhaps additional differences. The main difference in between Brazil and the EU is that um, in the EU we have a non-registered design right. In Brazil, the only way to have a design right is through registration. So that is an incredibly, incredibly important difference to take into account. If you, if you need to retain exclusive rights to the aesthetic features of your offering, the only way to do that in Brazil is through registration. Now we have to, to consider the requirements. What are the requirements to register this aesthetic feature? First of all, it has to be new, novel and original. And it has to be the external aspect of a product. So new, original, and external aspect. In the European Union, the requirements are novelty and individual character. So there's nothing about uh, um, the aesthetic feature being external to a product. That means includes more options for what you're doing. Um, the duration, the validity term of the right is similar. In the end, will be 25 years, both in Brazil and the EU. However, how you renew that is slightly different. Uh, the first term uh, in Brazil, the first term of validity of a design is 10 years. That can be renewed uh, every five years up to 15 years, bringing the total validity term to 25 years, which is what we have in the European Union. In the European Union, your first validity term is five years, renew renewable for five year periods up to 25 years. In the design uh, registration process. Um, as I was mentioned at the beginning, we have an unregistered design right in the European Union that only lasts for three years. The validity term there is three years. And um, uh, in Brazil, is only registered rights. Now, the process of registering uh, uh, an European or a design here is similar to what of a trademark. You have a formal requirement. That formal requirement uh, does not necessarily uh, need to be examined at the beginning of your request. And you can defer the publication of that right in the EU. In Brazil, um, in Brazil, you Complying with your formal requirements, um, your design will be automatic published and simultaneously granted. It's fairly similar. It's fairly similar uh, to uh, what we experience in the EU. The only difference is in the EU we are able to defer the publication. 
Here is also the possibility of having uh, the registration of your design through an international system. Now, uh, differently from trademarks, here you don't need a base right. You can request um, your international design uh, directly with WIPO. You have the international phase where the requests go through a formal examination with WIPO. And then WIPO forward your application to uh, the national office of your choice in the case of today, Brazil. So the Brazilian office will then exam the right again and register. Now, um, moving forward to patents and patents requirements. Patent is a patent is an exclusive right to a technical solution that is novel, has industrial applicability, and is known obvious for an expert in the field. An exclusive right to a technical solution. Your requirements both in Brazil and you will be the novelty. It has to be novel, not only in the territory you are requesting the registration of that right, but it has to be novel worldwide. So it has to be novel wherever you go um, to comply with this um, requirement. The validity term is also identical, 20 years from application then, date. Uh, examination um, is um, examination of patents and patent patenty novelty and requirements um, is an issue. It takes time. It takes sometimes it takes uh, from five to 10 years to have a patent register. Considering that the validity term is 20 years, that is a long time to be waiting for a decision and investing in that right. However, in both cases, there are partial solutions. Partial solutions being uh, a solution programs. Brazil is member of the patent prosecution in Huawei, which uh, many countries are members. And I, that is used for when a patent has been granted in one of these territories to accelerate the granting phase in Brazil. Also, there is a mechanism to accelerate uh, green patent uh, applications. And um, for certain products and process that require administrative authorization, this is valid both for you and, and Brazil. Those, those products that require this additional uh, administrative authorization, especially pharmaceutical drugs, in this case, there is a possibility of requesting an extension of um, the validity term. These extensions are uh, usually known as the Supplementary Protection Certificates, prolonging the, the validity for a few years. In terms of patent registration process, uh, here it's similar to what we've been seeing in um, trademarks designs. There is a formal application. This formal application has to include um, in the case of patents, a few elements, uh, description of description of the of the innovation, description of the technical solution, drawings if they are available, and uh, a claim, a set of claims. What are in this innovation? What are you claiming uh, exclusive rights to? These are, these are what you have to, to include in your formal uh, application. This is the same for Brazil. This is the same in the EU. There is no difference there. Uh, the formal application is then examined. It's a thorough examination to um, assess novelty, inventive, inventive step, and uh, industry applicability. 
formal examination takes around um, 36 months, sometimes more, depending on the field of the application. And here we have a few options for what, how to go through this process directly in the national office, in the national, uh, in the home country office. Uh, in the European Union, in any of the member states, um, Spanish intellectual patent, uh, patent and trademark office, Italian patent and trademark office, etc. And in Brazil, Brazilian uh, patent and trademark office. We also have the international option, which is a process. A process. So the international, international uh, uh, word intellectual property organization. Uh, has a process for you to uh, require uh, or uh, for you to gain exclusive rights over your technical solution in third countries. That is possible to use in Brazil and in the EU. In the European Union, you have additional systems to gain exclusive rights to your technical solution. That will be the European patent and the unitary patent. The European patent and the unitary patent have certain similarities. Uh, the European patent is a decision, is not a process. You have to go through a process, but at the end, it gives you a decision on patent patentability that it needs to be validated in the chosen territories within uh, the members of the European patent um, system. The unitary patent uh, has some additional benefits, means your, your, patent, um, your patentability decision is not only valid, uh, is valid, uh, but there is no need for validation. The decision is already um, enforceable in the members of the unitary patent system. And you also have uh, the ability to defend and enforce uh, your patent rights through one single court in one single procedure. And the decision is also valid to all the uh, member states of the uh, unitary patent. Those two possibilities are obviously not possible in Brazil. The and currently there are 18, sorry, there are currently 18 member states in the Euritary pattern. Sorry, I just wanted to jump in and add. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Um, so here um, I'm going to go through a little bit as well on how the international process is for the registration of uh, technical solutions. The PCT, the famous P PCT, requires you to have first a base right, a base patent, uh, a patent in a patent application in uh, your home country. Then, uh, with that, uh, with that application, you have twelve months to decide if you want to go directly through the national route, in internationalize directly with a national office of your choice, or through the War World Intellectual Property Office. In that case. Reaching that 12 months, you file your formal application. The international, the award intellectual property organization perform uh, an international search with an international opinion, and that is published. And then you can either select a, a further examination, international examination, or then just um, enter the national phase, in which case, um, the World Intellectual Property uh, Organization will forward, forward uh, this application through or to the national office of your choice. And then the national office of your choice will perform the examination of uh, the application as it would with a national patent. And that's what we have for patents today. <laughs> we move forward to copyright, which is similar, uh, similar in Brazil and the EU. Copyright is the rights, the exclusive rights to being recognized as the author of an artistic work, for example. Uh, the 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 right to be recognized as the author but also the economic rights to exploit this 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 artistic work no copyrights they 
do not require registration to to be performed. So you didn't don't need uh, to to go to the national office or the relevant office for registration. They display the rights, a uh, copyright display the rights as soon as the work or work of art becomes uh, public to the world or the moment they are created. The duration of the right here or the valid term of the right, it depends a little on the type of the artistic work. In general, uh, for, um, for uh, let's say, um, literary work, we'll be looking at 70 years, uh, the life of the author plus 70 years. If we're talking about perhaps software, um, then it's likely that the term, the valid term is 50 years. Uh, and now we, we would have to go through in details of what exactly this artistic or literary work is to determine the term of validity that can uh, vary slightly. And that happens both in Brazil and the EU. Um, now, um, in both in both regions, databases are protected um, through copyright, or in some cases in the EU through sui generis uh, database right where available. Um, in the EU, software a search can only be. Um, protected uh, or um, display certain rights by copyright. Now, um, I believe this is becoming uh, a rule uh, in many territories as well, um, where um, as such, when we talk about as such, we are merely talking about a mathematical formula. If we're talking about something that is not merely a mathematical formula, we can explore the possibility of having a different type of right displaying effects, exclusive rights uh, to, to that uh, element. This highly important uh, issue I bring with this slide, this is highly, highly important for you, is how can governments in the regions help, um, help you to obtain those rights? In the EU, we have a grant scheme offered by the national office. Some offices offer more than others. Uh, and we have the SME Fund, which is a collaboration by the Commission and the UIPO, which gives you um, a certain amount of reimbursement um, to the official fees you have uh, paid for the right you want to register. In the case of trademarks, if you're trying to register a new trademark or a national trademark in the European Union, the, this scheme, the SME fund, we will reimburse up to 75% of the uh, government fees. Uh, in Brazil, this scheme is not um, is non-existent. There is no reimbursement scheme. There is a reduction of fees for certain times of certain types of applicants. Uh, so, proprietors, micro enterprise with revenue um, smaller than 64,000 euros, smaller companies uh, with revenue uh, smaller than 858,000 um, uh, euros. There are further requirements as well um, for this type of companies. Um, to qualify for this reduction. There is uh, several additional requirements um, they have to fulfill to, to, to qualify for the, the reduction. Now, what is relevant here is that the SME fund can also be used for European SMEs 
to register their trademarks a design um, in Brazil. So you can use the fund to register your right in Brazil. However, here is mandatory that you use the word intellectual property uh, organization for your formal request. And last but not least, we have to talk about geographical indications. Geographical indications are collective rights, which related to geographical location, to a role geographical location plays in um, the case of Brazil, a particular product or service. In the case of you, uh, at the moment, uh, we only have GIs for agricultural products, spirit drinks, aromatized wines, or grapevine products. Uh, within, um, we are working on um, having GIs for non-agricultural products uh, shortly. Now, uh, to obtain a uh, um, GI in Brazil, the there is a need to provide a lot of documentation. One of them, if the GI is an European GI, is that the GI is existent in European Union. Um, a power of attorney uh, means that you're an authorized person and you authorize uh, um, a particular uh, representative in uh, the local territory of Brazil to uh, file that application for you. Proof of payment of the fees, uh, proof the legitimacy of the applicant. So, um, it's not possible for anyone to say, I just won't apply for this GI. Uh, you have to prove that you are the legitimate authorized person. Generally, is an association, um, someone that represents a collective of people and companies. You have to provide the name of, of the GI, how it became known, um, documents, that prove the influence of the geographical um, environment to the qualities of the product or the service. And an official instrument that determines uh, the geographical area and the representation, if there is a logo or something, the representation of the geographical indication. Trade secrets. Um, here, the name is very. Um, the name of the right is very clear. A trade secret, something that you keep secret, and that is uh, in both territories uh, identical. But for something to be tra uh, treated as a trade secret, it has you have to have um, to. Take, you have to have taken the necessary efforts to keep uh, that information secret. In uh, both cases, um, this, this secret has to have a commercial value. So it's not any secret you would gain trade secret protection through, uh, in the case of Brazil, unfair competition regulation. Uh, but to for for that it has to be uh, it has to have a commercial value. It also possible to um, protect trade secrets, and is recommended to to use these instruments instruments such as non-disclosure agreement and confidentiality clauses. So you will not be only relying on a fair competition, but also on contractual um, 
obligations. And that is uh, relevant for both territories. Now, what happens if you don't register your intellectual property rights? That's what you need to, that's what you want to know all the way along, no? So if you don't register, we, we started this presentation saying, everything happens after registration, use and enforcement. So um, if registration is not uh, performed, there will be an inability to attribute who is the owner of that right and who has the exclusive rights to use, produce, sell the relevant aspects of your offering. And as you cannot establish who is the owner, you are unable to defend it. And as we discussed, um, in for some of the, the intellectual property rights, availability uh, is one of the requirements. Being that available, being that right available, you risk losing that right to a competitor that um, realizes you have that lack um, or that, um, that hole in your strategy and your competitor then register uh, the right and then claim um, claim their exclusive rights to you. So he will refrain you from use something that you believe to be yours. That's the relevance of registration. Uh, there will be an inability to use those rights to leverage commercial relationships. You will be unable to uh, perform a, a license agreement, for example. Uh, there will be a reduced uh, valuation to your business, affecting uh, potential investment opportunities. There will be an incredibly weak legal position because you won't be able to defend your interests, your business interests, and potential reputational damage in case a competitor claims you are infringing them, their rights, for example. So all in all, registration is not an option for any business that is looking for a successful uh, future. Our final recommendation is know your IP, know what you're doing, know what is valuable to your consumer and how can you, um, how can you retain exclusive rights to, to uh, generate revenue. Conduct your searches, um, Availability searches, freedom to operate searches, novelty searches. Uh, that is an important exercise. But more important than any of these uh, steps is register. You found you have some relevant elements to your offering that uh, you want to gain exclusivity to register. Register in every territory you have a commercial interest and then continue performing monitoring the market to uh, understand when is relevant to enforce your right with that i finished our presentation for today the comparative uh guide uh european latin america um there are a lot of points in common, a lot of similarities. There are a few differences that we need to watch out for, but more than anything, both the EU IP Help Desk and the Latin American IP Help Desk are here to serve you. So if you have any queries, uh, we, uh, we are here for you. Just send us your doubts, uh, request your meeting with one of our experts and be ready for success.
I end the event, no? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>